Hello, it's good to see you. This is our Easter celebration online for Grace Community Church, Boulder City, Nevada. I'm Pastor David Graham. I'd like to invite you to watch the entire program. You're going to hear some incredible music, <clears throat> and we're going to talk about the resurrection. Not only Christ's resurrection, but how that resurrection can impact your life also. <clears throat> Would you join me in our opening prayer? Our gracious Father, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love for each one of us, Lord. We thank you for this time of year when we set aside time to recall with gladness <clears throat> how you completed your mission. You ran the race efficiently and faithfully. And Lord, our Father in heaven honored you by resurrecting you from your grave, Lord, for giving you a new resurrection body. And because of that, <clears throat> all of us who call Jesus Christ Lord have the incredible hope of rising from the dead ourselves and experiencing life eternal. So we ask, Father, that you would tune our ears and open our hearts that we might receive your message and your encouragement this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to share an announcement. I just have one, and that is for the Esther Circle of the Women's Association. This April 14th, it'll be on a Wednesday at 11.30 a.m. at Boulder Creek Golf Club. We're going to have Spring Lunch Out, it's called. And it'll be a wonderful menu and a wonderful time of gathering and fellowship. That's April 14th, Wednesday. And that's the Women's Association Esther Circle. And all of you women are invited to be a part of that. <clears throat> April 14th. God bless you. Good morning and welcome on this Easter Sunday. Please sing with me. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. We are
join me in singing Jesus, Shepherd of Our Thoughts. Jesus, Shepherd of Our Thoughts, gather all our thoughts in you into your presence bring us home Jesus shepherd of our hearts gather all our hearts in you into your presence bring us life Jesus, shepherd of our will, gather all our will in you, into your presence bring us peace. Jesus, shepherd of our thoughts, gather all our thoughts in you, into your presence bring us home you know the lord has been so good to us that almost all those who we have been praying for are recovering that the holy spirit has intervened in their behalf <clears throat> and so i don't want to start naming but let's pray for all those who are sick in our fellowship Let's pray for our nation as we attempt to get back to some sense of normalcy after the COVID pandemic. And we're not over that pandemic yet, but let's pray that wisdom, understanding, and that this will no longer continue to divide people. And we ask and that we would pray all those things. And then after I'm finished praying, would you join me in the Lord's Prayer? Let's pray. Father, Again, we are thankful and we praise you for your victory over sin and sickness and even death. Lord, we come to you now with our requests and we first of all want to say thank you for intervening for all the ones we've been praying for for the past several weeks, Lord. And I don't want to start naming them all for fear that I'll forget some, Lord, but may your will be done in each of those. And Lord, would you bring healing for those who need a touch of your healing hand? Would you bring comfort for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, Lord? Would you bring wholeness to those who are feeling depressed and unhappy, Lord? And I thank and praise you, Lord, that more and more people are able to get the shots <clears throat> of vaccination. I pray, Lord, that as we begin gathering again in the house of the Lord, in the sanctuaries of this nation, Lord, that you would pour out your spirit upon us and that we would sense, Lord, that you have purged us, that you have pruned the branches, Lord, that we may bring more fruit to bear <clears throat> for the sake of your everlasting kingdom, Father. And now we want to pray the prayer that you taught your first disciples to pray. Would you join me? Would you please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer? Let's begin. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not let us yield to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Please, Spirit, 
like to read you uh, from the scriptures. We'll start with our first reading in Psalm 1, I'm sorry, Psalm 16, and that's verses 9 through 11. Let's hear the word of the Lord together. No wonder my heart is glad and I rejoice. My body rests in safety. For you will not leave my soul among the dead or Allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. You will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. Psalm 16, verses 9 through 11. Now we turn to Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. This is one, this is Matthew's account of the resurrection story. We'll be sharing from Matthew 28 for the sermon. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him and they fell to the ground in a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said he would. Come, see where his body was lying. And now, go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb, and they were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed 
to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them, and they ran to him and grasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. That's this portion of the reading of the New Testament account of the resurrection of Jesus from the gospel according to Matthew. God bless you. I suffered loneliness, grief and despair. My life was a prison I couldn't get anywhere The rock at the entrance Of my tomb of defeat Could not be moved My death seemed complete But early one morning On that glorious day Jesus rode the rock He rode the rock away Answered my 
to share the Easter message with you. I've entitled it Celebrating Resurrection. And the reason why I didn't say celebrating the resurrection, I want us to think about the fact that not only did Jesus Christ rise from the dead, but the Bible clearly teaches that those of us who place our complete trust and confidence in him as our Savior and Lord, will also, at the great day of judgment, rise from the dead with a resurrection body very similar to what Jesus had. That's the clear teaching of Scripture. So this morning as we celebrate Easter, we're thinking about all resurrections, your resurrection, my resurrection, and of course, the resurrection of the firstborn from the dead, Jesus, our Savior and Lord. So the Bible says that Jesus was the first fruit of the general resurrection. And the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 3, we read these words. During the 40 days after he suffered and died, he appeared to the apostles from time to time. And he proved to them in many ways, that he was actually alive. And he talked to them about the kingdom of God. From the resurrection onward, the gospel that Jesus had preached became the gospel that was Jesus. It's all about his victory over the grave as a kind of validation for his public ministry that his father in heaven was pleased that he was willing to walk the way of death, to go all the way to the cross, to offer himself as the lamb of God for the sins of the world. And today, our hope and our entire Christian faith rests in his obedience to his father in paying the ultimate price because of his love and his father's love for all of us, Jew and Gentile. His love knows no bounds. So his incarnation, his coming and taking human form, finally results in a resurrected humanity. And I think that's beautiful. Because each of Christ's followers, you and I, and those of us who believe very deeply in who Jesus is and what he came to do for us, that he is indeed the Lord. In Romans 10, 9, we have this wonderful verse that Paul wrote, and he said, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. You shall be saved. So God has made it very simple. We must believe, which means to be fully convinced that Jesus Christ is who the Father validated that he was, the Son of God, even indeed the Messiah of Israel. Now, when we go back to the story, we see that these two Marys in Matthew's account are coming to the burial site to complete the preparation of the dead. What had happened was, to go back just a little bit, um, <clears throat> Jesus died, as the tradition says, on Friday night. Okay, well, Friday night sundown is the beginning of Shabbat or Sabbath day. You cannot do work on that day. So Joseph of Arimathea, being a good Jew, hastily pulled the body down and wrapped him in a shroud and temporarily laid him in the tomb. Okay. Now, the Romans had decided to put the stone in front of the tomb in this expensive grave that Joseph, who was a very wealthy man, had built for himself, and then to seal it with a Roman seal so that no mere disciple or group of disciples would be able to unseal it and roll the stone away in order to steal the body. That had been done and a Roman guard had been posted. 
Well, the women didn't know that. Even though both Marys were at the crucifixion, they were at the actual placement of the body into the tomb, and now they were going to be present at the resurrection. Now, that's an interesting part. Matthew likes to 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 share these kinds of factual things, but they were not privy to the sealing of the tomb because that had happened after they had gone. And so they're coming loaded down with the spices necessary to properly anoint and bury the body, which would recover require more wrappings and, of course, layers of spice wrapped again, more layers of spice. Myrrh was one of the most used spices. Not only did it preserve the body from a, an advanced decay, and the other spices were designed to mitigate the smell because, obviously, it, the body would decay and worms would get in and it would begin to smell. And so it was common for these bodies to to be that. So as they were coming, Matthew tells the story that they observed, first of all, the earth began to shaking, a great earthquake. And then the stone is rolled away. And Matthew records that it was an angel of the Lord that rolled the stone away. And evidently, Women saw this because they described his face as shining like lightning and his clothing was as white as snow. And of course, Matthew recounts that because of that sighting of the angel, the guards shook with great fear. I mean, can you even begin to imagine this heavenly being come down in great power with earth shaking and the stone rolling away and they fainted away as dead. I mean, they were completely fainted. And then the angel speaks to the woman. He says, don't be afraid. He says, come here and look in the tomb. Jesus, who was great, he isn't here. Then he tells them to go and tell the disciples. So he shows them the empty tomb to encourage their belief. Then he tells them to share, go and tell. And then we see that Matthew records that as they were going to tell the disciples, they meet Jesus. And Jesus greets them, and he uses a word in the Greek, kerete, kerete. And that word literally means rejoice. So it was a kind of greeting. When you are glad to see someone that you know, you would say kerete in Koine Greek. And it was your way of saying, I'm so glad to see you. Maybe that's the way we would see it in and say it in, in, in English in the 21st century. I'm so glad to see you. But he says, Kerete, rejoice, and greeted them. And of course, they couldn't believe it. And so they grabbed his feet and began to worship him. And of course, that was totally appropriate because he was the risen Lord. And this is the first time they had the opportunity to worship him. So he says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers. And notice that he says, brothers. Earlier, the angel said, go and tell Jesus' disciples that he was going to head to Galilee. But now Jesus himself uses a different term. He says, go and tell my brothers. So now we see that he has brought his followers. They were learners. They were servants of him and of the kingdom. But now he elevates them by calling them his brothers. Brothers in the same mission to proclaim the arrival of the kingdom of God. And I think that's interesting. Now, we have the intrigue in Matthew chapter 28. For the next couple of verses, we find out, and let me just read that for you, if, if I may. As the women were on their way, some of the guards, evidently they had waked up from their dead faint and went into the city and told the leading priest what had happened. So all of a sudden they call a meeting of the elders. They get together and they decided to give the soldiers a large bribe. They told the soldiers, you must say Jesus' disciples came during the night while we were sleeping and they stole his body. If the governor hears about it, we'll stand up for you so you won't get in trouble. So the guards accepted the bribe and said they were told to say. They said what they were told to say. And their story spread very quickly among the Jews in Jerusalem. In fact, that's still the story today, 2,100 years later. 
They basically, the Orthodox Jews and others, believe that the reason why we can't find the body is because the disciples came to steal it, which in so many areas is kind of ridiculous. And I don't have time to go into the penalty for a Roman guard to not fulfill the mission, and that was to protect that body. It would be death. And the fact that the Jewish leaders told them that they would cover for them and, and gave them enough money to keep their mouths shut. Well, it's interesting. First, these Jewish leaders, and listen, I don't want to appear to sound anti-Semitic at all. We love the Jewish people. They are our brothers. Our Christian faith comes from Judaism. In fact, without the Old Testament, the New Testament makes no sense. So we're saying these particular Jews were so jealous and they were so unhappy with Jesus's popularity and his following that they had used treachery to capture him in the Garden of Eden. They used illegality to condemn him in the trial. They used slander to charge him before Pilate. And finally, they complete that with bribery to silence the truth about him. And the ultimate result is they failed. They failed. Jesus did literally, factually rise from the tomb and is alive today. And the scriptures say he sits at the right hand of the father and he uh, is interceding for us, you and I, praying that our faith would remain strong, that we would run the race with perseverance, we would not get weak and faint along the way, that we would be continuing to increase in the knowledge and nurture of the Lord's ways, that we would read our Bibles and study them, that we would share our faith whenever we have the opportunity to explain to others the hope that we have. Now, finally, we come to the last portion of Matthew 28, and that's uh, what we call the Great Commission. <clears throat> now, what's fascinating to me, in this account that Matthew has, the 11 disciples listen to what the two Marys had told them, which the angel had told them. They go to Galilee, and they go to a mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshiped him. But then Matthew includes this. He says, but some of them doubted. Some of them doubted. I don't get this. How could they doubt? First of all, they are looking at Jesus. Remember earlier in one of the other gospel accounts, Jesus appears to them in Jerusalem and he shows them his hands and feet. And Thomas becomes a believer when he actually feels, physically sees Jesus and actually feels his hands and puts his hands in his side. But now these disciples, still some of them are doubting. I don't fully understand that. So he began to speak to them and he said, listen, I have given you, remember he called them brothers, I've given you authority. Or he doesn't say that. He says, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. And because of that, because I have all authority, I want you, therefore, to go and make disciples of all nations, to make a disciple, to proclaim the good news of salvation of sin in the name of Jesus, and to train and teach these new converts my ways. Teach them to observe all that I've commanded you. Well, let me finish this. And baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey the commandments I've given you. And be sure of this. I'm going to be with you always. Be with you always. Guaranteeing the success of their mission. And of course, we know in just a few days. First, he appeared to them for 40 days. 40 days. He had various appearances. The book of Acts tells us about all the different appearances that he made. And then he told them as he ascended back into heaven to go into Jerusalem and wait for the power. See, he was going to equip them with a supernatural ability. We call that Pentecost, the birthday of the church. And that was going to happen a little bit later. But this is the day that we remember. 
without the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Christianity makes no sense whatsoever. The entire faith of Christ, the entire Christian faith, the evidence of millions of churches surrounding the globe point to the reality that Jesus Christ not only came to teach us a better way to live, but made it possible for our toxics in nature to be cleansed, to change our hearts, to desire to walk in his footsteps, be obedient to his commands, and to thank him and to praise him our entire life. And when we are faithful to complete our journey in Christ, we are guaranteed on the last great day of the resurrection to rise from the grave and our new bodies will be constituted very similar to what Jesus had and those will be eternal bodies. They will never decay. They will be placed in the new heavens and the new earth free from the time constraint. It is time that causes decay, oxidation that causes decay, Perhaps the environment will be different. We don't know. We can only imagine what that might be like. But the scriptures clearly teach that Christ's followers will inherit eternal life and we will inherit the entire earth. Can you imagine the joy of exploring mountain ranges and valleys and, and rivers and fishing and all the things He's not going to place us in some kind of bubble in the sky where we sit on a marshmallow cloud and strum a harp. Nobody would look forward to that. No, it's an existence bursting with joy, bursting with life and experiences, maybe even beyond this planet. I don't know. We don't know. But this is why we are thankful for this day, Easter Sunday. Let's pray. Father, I thank and praise you, Lord, for your victory in Jesus Christ on the cross. Thank you that our Savior was willing and strengthened and able to make the ultimate sacrifice of offering his own life for the sacrifice for the sins of the entire world. Lord, it is enough. That's why he said it is finished, the work of redemption. And for that, we praise you and we thank you and we glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus Christ is risen today, hallelujah, our triumphant holy day, hallelujah, who did once upon the cross, hallelujah, suffer to be of praise to them to sing Alleluia unto Christ our heavenly King Alleluia who endured the cross and grave Alleluia sinners to redeem and save Sing we to our God above, Alleluia. Praise eternal as his love, Alleluia. 